Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you, especially on Resurrection Day. The gospel that we're going to look at this morning comes to us from Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 through 53, and then 28, 1 through 10. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb where Jesus lay. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. This is the gospel of the Lord. Many people are familiar with the idea that Jesus died on the Jewish feast of the Passover. And many understand what the connection is. If you think back to the days of Moses, when Moses was being used by God to call his people out of Egypt, out from under the thumb of the Pharaoh, God had brought many plagues against Egypt. And the final and devastating plague was the death of the firstborn. But all of those who trusted in Yahweh God were told to to sacrifice a lamb and to put the blood of the lamb over their door frames. And God would send an angel of death. And everyone who had the blood of the lamb on their door frames, the angel would pass over them so that they would be spared. In the same way, everyone who believes in the death of Jesus Christ, the lamb of God, is also spared eternal death and damnation and is freed from their sin. That's the gospel message. Believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. But many people don't know that Jesus was raised on a Jewish festival as well. He was raised on the Feast of First Fruits. The Feast of First Fruits came the first day of the week following the Sabbath that took place during the Passover feast. And so that means the first Sunday during the Passover. Well, Jesus was raised on that first Sunday after the Passover. And that was also the Feast of First Fruits. Now, what took place on the Feast of First Fruits was this the Jews were to gather the, the first fruits of their harvest. And take the stalks of wheat or barley, whichever it is that they raised, and would gather together a sheaf, which was made up of 30 or 40 stalks of wheat or barley, and they brought it to the temple as an offering to God to give thanks for their harvest and anticipating a greater harvest to come. This was the feast of first fruits. Now, Paul would call Jesus the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep, meaning that he was the first to be raised from the dead and to be brought forth in a glorified body. Other people had been raised to the dead, the ones that Jesus had raised from the dead, as well as we know some Old Testament raisings from the dead. But those people died at some point afterwards. Jesus raising from the dead, 
was different. He was raised in a glorified body, never to die again. And most Lutheran commentators understand that this raising from the dead that took place that we just read about is a similar resurrection. A resurrection where people were raised not to die again, but were raised in glorified bodies. Now, it's, uh, for a lot of people, this is difficult to understand. What happened to these people? Where did they go? And why were they raised? Well, I think that if you understand the, the feast day of the first fruits, to me, it seems fairly obvious that Jesus was raising many more stalks so that they could be a part of the sheaf and the offering to God with a promise that more are to come. That's precisely what the resurrection of Jesus was. A promise that further resurrections are to come, yours and mine. Jesus died on Passover as the Passover lamb. He was raised on the feast of first fruits and brought with him a sheaf of resurrection bodies to God with the anticipation of bringing in a greater harvest in days to come. And of course, the days to come will be on that great and glorious last day when Jesus comes again and fulfills the promise that we will all be raised to new life. And those that believe in him will, will enter into eternal life with him in the world to come. That's the promise. You see, in a, in a real way, the last day met us here and now at the cross. The judgment upon this world has taken place. And all who believe in Jesus Christ and who trust in him are clothed in his righteousness and given the promise that we too will be raised to new life on that last day. In the meantime, should we die, we go to be with the Lord, and our bodies lay in the earth. But on that great and glorious last day, when he comes again, we will be raised to new life, just as these people were in Jerusalem. Just as Jesus himself was raised to new life. We too will be raised to new life. And you see, it's our job as the body of Christ on this earth, to now go out and to make disciples, to baptize people, to teach them about what Jesus has done for them, that he suffered and died on the cross, that he took all sin upon himself so that we would be forgiven and that everyone who believes in him should have everlasting life and on that great and glorious day would be raised to new life and be ushered into the to the resurrection life in the world to come. This is the gospel that, that we have been commissioned to bring to the world. Some of us through preaching, some of us through teaching, but all of us through showing the love of Christ to all the people that we meet. John tells us that as we love one another and are one with one another, that we proclaim to the world that the Father has sent the Son. See, it's our job to love others and to bring the, the love of Christ to bear in all of our relationships. And when we have the opportunity to tell people the reason for our joy, because Jesus has loved us. He died for us. He took on all of our sin and has clothed us in righteousness. We are righteous solely because of his grace, not because of anything that we have done. We are empowered by his Holy Spirit to show love and mercy to others that we might bring others into his kingdom, to bring in the harvest, to bring in other sheaves, so that on that great glorious day, on that great harvest which is to come, we will have brought in all of the sheaves for that resurrection which is to come. 
that will usher in eternal life. Amen.